Hey there, good people. Welcome to Talking Media's first ever podcast conversation. This is where we talk it all from politics, socials, culture, and everything else in between. Stay tuned because our co host for today is none other but Danaya Bustamante from Cuba, who will be chatting with us on pre traveling tips on our series Adventure on a Budget. So, first of all, our team for this podcast series is Adventure on a Budget. And we think it's super important for people um, to know that they can travel regardless of finance or, you know, time. You can squeeze it in and there, there is adventure always next door. And there are always things that you could discover and it doesn't have to break your bank account or anything. Well, first of all, let me thank you again for giving me this opportunity for uh, interviewing me and I can share my stories and my thoughts with, with the people. So what is traveling on a budget? Well, everything has advantages and disadvantages. So traveling on a budget is, is fun, it's a lot of fun, but it's also hard. So um, it's a lot of fun because you have the opportunity to meet a lot of people people that are going to change your life, people that are traveling on a budget like you. So you can you, you can meet those people, for example, when you're hitchhiking, because you don't want to spend money for, for transport. So you do a hitchhike and you meet a lot of people doing that. Uh, when you stay at hostels, cheap hostels, then you, you share rooms with other people that are traveling like you, or you want to do a trip, so you share cost. Maybe you have to, to rent a car or something to go to places that there is not public transportation. So you, you meet people and do the trip together and sharing those experience with those people is, is going to like change your life. So it's a lot of fun, make new friends. Um, you, you you can enjoy like very very good even when you don't have money i even prefer to travel on a budget than to travel with a lot of money because sometimes you have a lot of money then you go to a resort and you stay like the whole weekend there like doing nothing uh going to the pool going to the beach going to 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 the disco at night to party a little bit and then you you end up like meeting nobody because everybody's in their own world and everybody has a lot of money or things like that but when you are traveling without money then the funniest things happen to you and you, you you will have a great experience believe me so the first point I could mention is flexibility so if flexibility mixed with price so if I don't have the money to to afford like whatever flight is on the market now and book whatever flight comes then I try to be flexible on the date so either I, I, I want to go to a specific place, then I, choo- I choose uh, the weekend where the flights are cheaper. So I don't go on Christmas or I don't go on Easter weekend. So I try to go on a weekend where, or during the week even better, where, where not many people are going to this place. So the prices are low. So this could be one point, like choosing the, the dates uh, being flexible or uh, you can travel overland, so that's what I do. For example, if I fly, I book a flight from Germany where I live now, and and I fly to Africa, like let's say Kenya. What I'm gonna do in next November, I'm gonna fly to Kenya. Then I choose the look, the rest of the locations, the places I wanna visit that are near to this place, and I can go overland, so I don't have to pay another flight. So I use one trip to visit more countries. And so I can go from Kenya to Ethiopia, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, all the countries that are around that I can go by bus. And in this way I save some money. So that's point number one. Then second point for me to choose a location is my hobbies. So I want to go to a place, of course I want to have a nice holiday, but I want to do something that I like. I, I like sightseeing, so I do sightseeing everywhere I go. But there are a few things that I like also doing for example i love dancing salsa so i try to choose a location where i know they have like salsa parties or even like salsa meetings on a weekend they, we call it salsa congress where a lot of people are going to come to this place on the same weekend to dance salsa all together so i try to look where are those places where people are going to dance salsa this weekend and then i choose this location to go 
in case uh, you don't like salsa maybe you like climbing mountains then or you like scuba diving there are so many hobbies that you can combine with the trip so you can look for for a location where you you can have find this these hobbies and the third point would be friends so either i travel together with my friends then maybe it's going to be cheaper for everybody or i go and visit some friends that i can stay at their places so it's going to be cheaper for me so i choose a location where i know i have some friends or these friends can connect me with another friends and my trip is going to be cheaper um maybe i can add um, point number four for example i also look at the weather i try to travel to countries um, to choose a location where it's going to be summer because i don't like winter <laughs> so i'm from cuba i like summer all the time so for example when i'm in germany and it's like kind of february march which is very very cold in germany and it's snowing like crazy so i, I on on those months for example i went to australia new zealand or a year after i went to brazil because i know in those countries it's summer when we have winter in germany and every time I travel to, to Africa, it's, it's also in the winter time in Germany. So I start my trip like in November when it's getting colder. And then I disappear from Germany until February, March, sometimes until May. So I stay in Africa for sometimes six months, eight months. And I skip the whole winter in Germany. So that's another point for me in order to choose a location. I think um, number one is trust. Um, in not a specific order, so I'm just telling you what it comes to my mind. So trust is one of the skills I have developed while traveling because I, I trust my instinct. Um, I have learned to trust people because when you start traveling, a lot of people tell you, oh no, don't go there, don't go to this specific country, it's very dangerous, people there will try to do this to you, will try to do that. And I go to the place and I have the feeling people try to help me. People see me traveling alone and they want to help me, they want to show me the places, they want to make sure that I have a good time. So I, I trust those people, I, I just m meet new people and somehow you have the instinct and you can see, okay, this person wants to make me feel good or wants to do something bad to me. Uh, mostly it's, it's, it's a good feeling, so um, I have learned to trust people. Second skill I can tell you I have developed is organization and coordination so when you start traveling and you have to plan like long trips you need a lot of organization skills for example if i have to apply for a lot of visas uh, when i went to west africa last year i did uh, all the countries in mainland not the island so i didn't go to cabo verde and all these countries just the mainland from nigeria until uh, senegal i did all these countries 14 countries all alone overland so all traveling by bus motorbike whatever so I needed a lot of coordination to do this because some of these visas, so I, I went to 14 countries as I say, I need a visa for 12 of these countries. I have, I, I have a German passport so I don't need visa for Senegal and, Gam and the Gambia, but I need visa for the other 12 countries. So I had to apply for all these visas and I had to, to call embassies and uh, find out which visas I can apply in Germany before starting my trip and which visas I could apply when I was in Africa because I didn't have the time to apply for all the visas. <laughs> this is, I mean, it's 12 visas, you need a lot of time. While I was still in Germany, I had only a few weeks. So I did what I could in Germany. And when I was, for example, in Nigeria, I applied for my visa for Liberia. But I called the embassy to ask if I could do that, even if I don't live in Nigeria. Because some embassies, they tell you you cannot apply in the country if you don't live or you're a resident of this country. So you have to find out in which countries you can apply for the next country. So it's a lot of organization and coordination. You have to calculate also how long you want to stay in the country, more or less. This could change when you are traveling, but you have an idea, more or less, how long you want to stay because you have to apply for the visa and tell at the embassy how long you want to stay and from which day to until which day because they are going to ask you for that. So if you prepare a long trip, you have to calculate more or less how long you're going to stay in every country in order to, to organize your trip. So that's the second skill I I manage also, for example, I, as I told you before, I have a huge network, friends that I have to message, I have to ask them, hey, okay, can I stay at your place, how it's going to look when I arrive to, I don't know, Ghana, 
and all these places that you have to coordinate and drive to your friends and tell them more or less when you're going to be there to see if they're going to be able to host you and to show you the city also i like dancing so i i like to to organize my trips when they have for example salsa party so i write to my friends in whatever country south africa and tell them okay i want to be there in march is, is there any specific good party taking place in march tell me the date then i can uh, adapt my trip to this uh, date so it's organization is, is a lot to do um the third skill i could tell you i have developed is um flexibility or let me call it more like adaptation i don't know how to say is um yeah so for example when you're traveling in africa a lot of things can happen you know like public transport you think it's gonna take like four hours to go to the next city it's gonna take eight so you have to to be uh, patient so that's another skill patient so you have to be to, to be able to say okay um, I, it's not um, it's not what I wanted to do but it's what is happening now so I have to um, punctuality is a thing that for example in Africa it, it doesn't exist so you cannot tell people oh I want to start the trip at 8 o'clock please pick me up and they're gonna come like 10 o'clock and you're gonna be upset but they're gonna be happy because it's normal so you have to, to adapt and to, to take it easy and things take the things like it's coming um, Oh, maybe you you arrange with a friend. Oh, okay, I'm gonna stay at your place, and you think, oh, he has like a normal house, nice house, whatever, and you arrive there, and he lives in the middle of the village, in the middle of nowhere, what is not even a bed. So you have what is. Well, I have a lot, but seriously, a lot of experiences that I would like to share. A lot of things that happened to me while traveling that are amazing and that are actually the reason why I love traveling that much and it's difficult to choose one <laughs> and every time people ask me this I was like every time I, I say a different answer you know because I have so many stories to tell so the story I can't tell you today is not going to be the same one that I'm going to tell to somebody next week when they ask me the same question um, actually next week um, like now end of May I'm, I'm publishing in my blog my blog uh, www.itravelondance.com uh, I'm publishing some articles about uh, some of experiences I had in Africa that I, that are amazing as well and the articles is is gonna be is gonna call TIA this is Africa and if you have time you can check it uh, but last year I published one about Burundi so that's the one I, I will tell you today because um, I, I found it like amazing or oh, everything that happened to me I cannot tell you now the whole story in a few minutes so you can also check it online in my Burundi blog um, my Burundi post in my blog but the thing is like um, everybody I asked about Burundi told me why do you want to go there it's like this country has a lot of problems political problems civil wars um, policemen everywhere uh, I don't know like a lot of things it's very dangerous don't go there and even I asked few travelers that I know they have been there before they have been all countries in the world things like that so I always ask for advice to people that have been to these places before and they were like no don't go there really it's dangerous blah blah and I was like oh my god I really want to go there but why everybody's telling me this about this country and then I was like okay I'm not gonna go there but few months later after I took my decision of not going to Burundi I was in Kenya again because I won in January then I decided not to go to Burundi but in August I went to Kenya again and then I met a girl and she lives in Burundi. I met her in Kenya and I was like, okay, I'm gonna ask her directly because I have never talked to anybody who lives there. And she was like, oh my God, no, come to my country. I'm gonna take care of you. Don't worry about what people say. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna enjoy it. And I was like, okay, that's what I wanted to hear. That's what I wanted to listen. So I'm going to Burundi. So it was a whole dilemma to get the visa to go to Burundi so you have to read my post about it I was very very lucky uh, this is unbelievable it was very difficult to get the visa because I was in Kenya and I was applying for the visa to Burundi I needed like invitation letter that uh, had to be stamped in, in, in Burundi and oh, a lot of things but at the end and I was even going to I, I went to climb Kilimanjaro so I couldn't even be there to take care of my visa I had to take my passport to Tanzania and then go back to Kenya and then I was like okay let me see if I can get the visa now I had like no time for it but at the end it worked it and I went to Burundi and from the first minute I arrived to Burundi until the last minute I went back to the airport 
to leave the country. I had an amazing time with the locals there, my friend and some friends of her. And I spent no money. That was unbelievable. Those people, they didn't let me to pay anything. So I went every day and night. We went to places. We visited places that but my friend she lives there and she, she didn't know about those places. We went to an amazing waterfall and she was like, I didn't know we have this waterfall in this country. It's unbelievable. Solo traveling is, is, a, is a big challenge and not everybody's ready for it. But yeah, like everything in life, it had pros and had cons. Um, so if I have to tell you some of the pros, I would say like when I'm traveling alone, I get a lot of help from people. I get help like accommodation, like car surfing or like I say, friend of friends that offer me accommodation, like, okay, you are traveling alone, no problem, I have a couch at my place, you can crash there, you, you can stay there as long as you want. I even have people, they they told me, you know what, I have, um, my friend has an apartment, which is like empty right now, I'm going to give you the key, you can stay there. But people trust you more when you are traveling alone, like if you are traveling in a group or you are traveling with somebody else, they are not going to give you the key of their house, like, oh my God, I don't know what those people are going to do in my house. But when you are alone, people trust you. And when you are a girl, even more, people think like, oh my God, traveling alone as a girl, that's, that's dangerous. But actually, people, people help me a lot. It's, uh, it's unbelievable how much help I get from people. And sometimes they look at me like, oh my God, this poor girl alone, what she's going to do now? And then I have... The, I have days where I'm like going to a waterfall alone and then I meet a family and they're like oh girl no come with us so they prepare like a picnic they went to a waterfall with everything drinks food sandwiches whatever and they invite me for lunch no come join with us oh we have an extra hammock just hang out there just enjoy the waterfall just spend the day with us here and those kind of things they, it's difficult that they happen to you when you are traveling with more people um, so that's some of the pros um, traveling alone where it's, it's easy to move you can move everywhere when you are alone it's, it's easy to take decisions because you don't have to, to um, take the decisions with nobody else so it's only you so if you decide oh my god I love this place I want to stay here for two more weeks then you just do it so you don't have to ask for permission you don't have to to discuss with anybody else you want to stay two weeks only one or two days so you just do whatever you want you're free because um, you're traveling alone so you, you can decide where to go when to go if you want to wake up early today to run to see the sunrise or if you want to wake up late you want to go to a party and wake up late this day is your decision so you don't have to to discuss this with anybody else and you get a lot of invitations sometimes that sounds funny but it's true so when you're traveling alone like people are um oh my god no come to our house we're gonna cook dinner you can try local food you have to try our food before leaving the country or um i have tickets for the theater I, it happened to me my friend gave me tickets for concert because he, he was like, oh, I have tickets for a concert, you want to join me? Yeah, let's go there. And um, yeah, you get, you get a lot of invitations. You, you you get to know, to meet more people. Because when you're alone, then you talk more to the people. When you're traveling with somebody, you are concentrating in this person and you're traveling and talking all the time to this person. Like, when you're alone, then you, you, you get to, to meet more people. I don't know if you get the point. So traveling has helped me to get to know myself better, to get to know the best part but also the worst part of me. So it's, it's like you don't even know how you're going to react so, to some situations until you live it by yourself. So traveling is going to help you to, to get to know yourself. It's going to put you in extreme situations, it's, it's going to open seriously all your mind. Um, you're going to see, you're going to get to know more of the world and if you are a person that loves food traveling is essential because you get to to taste different cuisines like you, you okay i can i live in germany i can go to italian restaurant and probably it's going to be very good but if i go to italy and i taste the pizza the pasta the coffee i'm not a coffee drinker but i know the coffee in italian is very good the ice cream there are a lot of things that you can try it better if you go to the country and oh my taking the first step and 
taking a long trip there are many things you should not be scared of because once you start you will see how amazing things are gonna happen to you one what i have day. learned while traveling is that people that have the less are people that are gonna give you the most the more this unbelievable and the best place where i have seen this is in africa i have met people that seriously have nothing to give but this nothing they will share it with you and that's amazing that's the best lesson i have learned in my life and also those people that have the less are the happiest people in the world so i love that and i love africa for this reason and i seriously encourage everybody to travel and to live this by their own you will love it okay with this question i think we finished the interview <laughs> and i'm really really thankful that i had the, the time the opportunity to share this with you and i hope i i can help people to to decide to to go on a trip and whatever you you want to know anything else you can always contact me uh instagram i travel and dance or my facebook page or sometimes i post videos in youtube so just follow me just approach me if you have any question and if you live in a country when i'm gonna travel i will be very happy to meet you and yeah so i'm here for whatever you need thank you very much bye